isn't bad going considering that Okay, how many hands? Okay, yeah. Okay, how many of you here have ever tried to drive in Los Angeles? Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not, so. Um, okay, so yeah, we get people there. Um, our meeting's a little unusual. We actually meet in three different locations. We start off at Union Station, right in the middle of downtown. We're there from five to seven, which is the official 2600 meeting time. After that, we move to Philippe's Deli, which is about a block away. Um, we're there till 10 when they close, but people don't start turning up till 8, which means that at 10 p.m. we move over to Denny's by uh, the scenic uh, city jail, which is a great place to be hanging out at midnight when they start releasing folks. It gets real interesting. Um, but generally, even though we're running that late, we, we still get a large number of people. Now, yeah, we're getting 45, 50 people a month turning up. The problem is... We had one month where we actually had a grand total of eight people turn up. We said, screw this, and went off and saw a movie. We needed to save it. Um, pretty much the problem was in Southern California, and a lot of other people were saying this as well, the scene was dying. They had no, no point of contact, no point of entry to actually talk to people about things they were interested in. So we started working on reviving it. The main thing that brought it back was we started printing flyers and updating the website regularly. And that's kind of brought people in. I know you guys were in pretty much the same boat. Yeah. Um, we're, we had a... I'll give you some background on Salt Lake. Um, the Salt Lake 2600 meeting started in, I think it was 1996, with about two people going to a coffee shop every month, religiously, who were friends. But uh, there was no advertising. There was no web page or anything like that. Nothing in 2600 to say it was there. It was just kind of like we're at a 2600 meeting. Um, I moved from New York to Salt Lake City and was not aware that there was any, you know, scene in Salt Lake. Actually, there our slogan for 2600 Salt Lake City is, believe it or not, there are in Utah because everybody who shows up to the meeting thought they were the only one in Utah and now we get an attendance of about between, I think it's like 35 to 40 people. Um, which isn't bad considering, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bash on here for a second. Utah has two million people in it. Uh, LA has about what eight million. Some, eight million some people in it. Huge number. So we're we're almost we're almost at LA. So yeah, I mean, geez, the simple fact you were able to bring that many people out of the woodwork. I mean, by numbers alone, we should, you know if if this is taken as a ratio, we should probably have about 160 people turning up every is month. This, right. Yeah, yeah something almost this way. Something's being fun. It's the metal badges. I blame you. But um. When I started going to the meetings, it was about two and a half to three years ago. There were seven people there or so. Uh, the first person I met was Almas of the DOC, who's hawking t-shirts in the vendor area right now. Um, we, from the first time I went, I talked to one of the founders, uh, Kenny of Hectic.org, and said, hey, I saw your page. It was like a one-page thing that said, this is where the meeting is, um, and this is where uh, what times we meet, blah, 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 same deal as, you know, default 2600 meeting times. Um, and I said, I'd like to do something with a little more content, maybe get some pictures up there, contact information for uh, people who come to the meeting. I don't know how many of you, how many people here attend 2600 regularly or at all? All right, um, well, it, if you go to a 2600 meeting and you meet somebody and you're like, you, you can meet 30 people and then there's one person that you really connect with on something or there's a project you'd like to work on together and then you forget their handle, you know, uh, super ultra ninja killer or something like that and you're like, I can't remember that dude's handle. And, um, but you'd like to get in contact with them. So when I would go to the meetings, anybody who was new, I'd take down their, you know, their handle, email address, website, and you know, put it on the page. We don't do that anymore uh, because if you can't remember, I'm just tired of collecting email addresses. But uh, but when we first started out, it was good because it got people back together. If someone fell out of the meeting for a month, then they'd get an email from the person who was like, "Hey, uh, you know, you were talking about that project, and I really want to talk about it. Oh, okay, I'll be at the next meeting." And um, so people just started coming together. Uh, I started printing up flyers, putting them in the issues of 2600 at, uh, you know, Barnes & Noble, Borders, uh, dropping them in technical schools and the CS departments of uh, local colleges and whatnot. And we started getting attendance. People were coming a lot more, but we were starting to attract a lot of the script kitty slash scene whore 
uh, group. Now, our attendance was up, and that was great. We thought, hey, look at us. We have you know these big numbers. But the percentage that was actually there to talk about things that were technical or even uh, talk about uh, anything constructive at all it was probably about half. Like everyone would go off into little groups and talk about things, and there was the you know the guys who would run around and try to you know, hey hey dude, hello, I got this, I got that, yeah. I'm talking about you know, and uh, so it got to the point where we had all these people, and there was someone who showed up at the meeting one time. A guy never contributed anything like that. He shows up. He leaves uh, the food court. We have it in a food court, a pretty large one. Um, and we're back in the corner so we don't bother anybody. But he shows up and says, uh, uh, like, and he goes off on, onto, out into the mall and he comes back with a couple cell phones. And apparently he'd stolen the cell phones from the kiosks out there and he decided it would be a good idea to come back to the 2600 meeting and take these apart. And he starts ripping them apart and, you know, he's like 16, 17 years old and at the time I'm like 21 and I'm like, you're an idiot. I'm the one who's going to get in trouble for this, not you, you know. They'll just slap you and throw you out of the mall. But I brought you here. So uh, I was fed up at that point with, the, with that kind of attitude there at the meeting and I, I talked to some of the founders and I said, uh, I'm going to lay the smack down. I'm just going to say, look, here's how it's going to be. We're going to have structure. Um, for the first hour, talk about whatever you want. Talk about movies. Oh, did you see Minority Report? Did you see, you know, whatever? Uh, and then starting at 6 o'clock, we have talks. Uh, I get on everybody. All the, Some of the Salt Lake guys are here in the front row. They will attest to the fact that I will get on their case about, dude, write a talk. Come on, you got to write something. You, know, you haven't written anything in almost a year. And at 6 o'clock, they start giving their talks. And when those are over, the conversation starts again. But since we had those talks, it lends to more technical discussions. And I basically have said, if you don't want to listen to the talks, it's a big food court. Go over there and talk over there. But do not talk while someone else is talking. I mean, yeah. you know, honestly, let's uh, be mature and have some manners. Uh, it takes a lot to put together a talk and then even more to get up in front of a group of people and, and present it. So have respect for the people who are there. If you don't like it, go away. But that became, it kind of became self-policing. Um, the technical-minded people have uh, taken over the meeting again. We've, I, I did a talk that was, um, the first talk ever was last April, and it was called uh, Script Kitties and Scene Horrors, How Not to Be One and Why We Hate Them. And it was based off of. <laughs> um, I mean, good point. You know, it's it actually the talk is um, mirrored on 2600slc.org, which is our meeting site. All of the talks that are given at the meeting are on that site uh, under texts. Um, but so I, I presented this thing, and it was based off of uh, Pyro and Shatter did a talk called "Fact the Kitties" at DEF CON 8 where they basically laid it down and said, "This is how you should behave, and you don't have anything to prove. Don't if you know." Uh, what is it? Let people think you're an idiot. Don't open your mouth and prove it. Yeah, I mean, people people have this strange idea that the minute you send them to a 2600 meeting, it's a license to behave like a complete and utter tit. They're, they're, the mind boggles. I don't understand this. It's like, you know, the normal bounds of society suddenly don't apply. And then they look really shocked when there's all these angry people turning on them, going, what the hell are you doing? You know, you are not wanted here because of your behavior. They, they don't seem to get this. And... It's, it's very much a double-edged sword. You know, you turn up, you act like a dick, people aren't going to want you there. I don't they, seem to understand this. Yeah. One of the things is, like, if we don't want you there, if you're not there, like, if you can come and not contribute, and that's fine if, you, if you're learning or you're interested in learning, but if you're sitting there and stealing things from inside the mall and going and breaking them apart at our meeting, then, you know, I have no patience for unintelligent people. So it, it's like, we laid it down, some people were kind of iffy on it at first. They're like, oh, I don't know about this. You know, I like just going and being social with, with people and whatnot. But after about six months when they saw the decline in, you know, the morons, basically, and the, that the discussions that we had were becoming more tech-related or, um, you know, just learning from each other and being able to say, I don't know, is, a, is huge. At when you go to anything. I, I don't know is okay. I don't know if anybody uh, knows that, but yeah. we have a guy who's really good at that. Like everyone, they'll be like, does everybody know what the network OSI model is? And everyone will sit there and go, yeah. 
Yes. Yes, I do. And they really don't. And then someone will go, no, I have no idea. And it's like, cool. And you explain it really quick. And now everyone else can understand because one guy had enough balls to say, I yeah. don't know. So, um, how do you know? Oh. I was yeah. just going to say, you know, asking, asking questions, you're not tainting yourself as appearing ignorant. Everybody doesn't know everything. I certainly don't. Grifter doesn't. Nobody else does. Speak for yourself, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we, won't get into, we, won't, we won't get into what happened with the radios yesterday. But, um, you yeah, know, I mean, you know, if you don't ask questions, you're not going to learn anything. And you're not going to get anything out of it. And if you're not encouraging people to ask questions, you, the meetings are going to go to hell. You know, you're going to have a bunch of people sitting around drinking coffee and talking about the DVD they rented at Blockbuster last night. Yeah, agreed. Um, basically, where the resurrecting the scene, um, how many people even believe that there still is a scene to, that is attached to this? Are there a few stragglers? Okay. Hangers on. These are the people who will carry this into the future, the ones who don't think it's dead or it's not impossible to bring back. Um, it's, yes, you know, Hackers came out in 1995, and the scene took quite a shot in the gut. Well, that and that, that and uh, the fact that anybody with 500 bucks to spare can walk down to CompUSA, buy a cheap computer, plug it into their phone line, and they're now online. And that was that was the real thing that started bringing about the demise of everything. Because, you know, let's face it, the internet is pretty much the full scope of what most people focus on in terms of hacking. And hacking to me is not purely about the internet. It's about finding ways of doing things that were previously thought not possible. By giving people basically cheap all you can eat internet access, that's what the focus became. How many people do you still think are playing with the phone system, for example? I mean there's there's some pretty there are some people out there doing it, but it's really bubbled under everything because the focus has shifted and the focus has become very narrow. One good thing about the meetings is you actually get a chance to bring the people in who are interested in all these different aspects of hacking and get them together and talk. And actually show that there is a focus out there. And a sharing of ideas yeah. and uh, of ideals. Um, what, uh, what I, where it comes in with resurrecting the scene, what, where I want to move our 2600 meeting to, like we've taken the steps to, to have the structure and to start doing the talks and they're mirrored on the website and we have you know, the new section that's updated and photos from the meeting. You can go to the Salt Lake City website and, and actually, like, know what went on there because everything is there. The talks are there. You can see who was there. And you can read about what happened. Yeah, um, I, mean, I was going to say, conversely, you know, Salt Lake has, has a pretty good structure to how everything works in terms of the flow of the time of the meeting. We don't really tend to do that. Um, what generally happens is, is on the mailing list, people start throwing out ideas, talking about it, turn up at the meeting, and it's like, okay, um, everybody who was interested in the wireless stuff we were talking on the list, go over here. And they'll take over a corner of the meeting. And, you know, people will wander in and out, but you'll have a core group of people who are actually interested in what's going on, and everybody else is off doing their own thing, which also works for us. I mean, it's all in the context of how the meeting's being set up and run. Um, I think the, um, as far as our meetings go, where we're going with this, uh, do people still read 2600 anymore? Can I get a show of hands who reads 2600? All right. See, so there are people out there. The whenever I say, oh, like, for instance, on FNet, I join pound 2600 and say because I heard that oh, one of the uh, talks I gave at 2600 was published. I said, does anyone have the new issue of 2600? Now this is in pound 2600. Oh man, oh that's a bunch of crap. You still read that? Oh you kitty blah blah. I'm like, yeah, this is this what is, the hell. This is also on irc.2600.net. I should point out. <laughs> it's so, yeah, yeah, which is yeah. dead now. Well, it's been but, up and um, down for a while, but yeah. But um, I think where where people need to take it is is getting that back to where it used to be. A lot of people say it's a political rag. Some people say, well, that's good. I like the fact that it's a political rag because I can find out all the politics that I need to find out about that are that involve technology through 2600. And like, I'm not going to sit here and bash 2600 all day. But yeah, I think it's a little too p political. Yeah. I don't read the editor's comments anymore. I read the articles, the ones that are good. Yeah, I mean, one, one of the things that the LA meeting specifically has been trying to do is sort of divorce itself from all of the well, political bullshit that's going on in the magazine. You know, we very much 
understand what the magazine is meant to be about, what it's meant to represent. And I can't speak for everybody necessarily, but I can say that personally, I do feel that it's moving away from its technical focus. And so what we try to do is very much keep ourselves neutral on that and basically keep the politics out of hacking. Politics is something that's personal. It, it doesn't have a pl Put it this way, I don't spend my five bucks on the magazine because I want a consciousness raising, raising session. I want source code. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. Well, that's a good point. Um, actually, would you, would you mind saying it a bit louder for the benefit of the cameras? That's a good point. And there are definitely things such as the DMCA that, that cross both boundaries that are both political and hacking related. And I'm certainly, I'm, you know, certainly not going to deny that. However, I don't feel that hacking should be about politics. I feel that it should be about hacking and improving things. How the improvements are done, that's another question. Having, it, this, having an article... Oh, sorry, I was just going to say, it's, it's a very wide-ranging debate. I'd be happy to talk about it with you afterwards. We just... Yeah, you can go for hours yeah. on that one. <laughs> but, uh, it, it's, there's a difference between having an article about the EFF or having an article about the DMCA uh, versus having a magazine with four to five to six articles about the DMCA, four to five to six articles about the EFF, things like that. You know, uh, EFF's a great organization. I just don't want to read a book about it every quarter. Um, but everybody complains about it, but nobody does anything about it. So uh, that's where, like, the talk that I did got published. It's on dumpster diving. And um, I said, hey, you know, what the hell? I'll take this one, I'll submit it, and I'll see if they publish it. And I'd like to see um, our text area of our website that says, you know, like I have a list of all the different talks that have been given over the last year, and I'd like to see things like, you know, published in the winter uh, 2003, or, you know, published in uh, spring of 2003, next to it. Uh, taking these uh, technical talks and getting them out there for everyone to see. Um, well, actually, you're, you're making another good point here peripherally. Um, you're, you know, the things you cover don't have to be ultra, ultra high level, you know, uber technical things. You know, not everybody needs to have source code thrown at them. There are a lot of things out there like dumpster diving that people still, you know, you can't go, I've had people say to me, oh, you can't go dumpster diving. Like, you know, dumpster diving is a logical impossibility. Okay. Now, let me see. Okay. Uh, dumpster. Open. Trash. Climb in. Grab stuff. Go away. You know, you can do it. And people don't seem to realize that a lot of what relates to hacking is really basic stuff like that. And there's a lot of people who need to know about it because if they don't hear about it, they're never going to go any further. It's, it's going to give them the push to start looking into things a little bit more than they are already. Uh, sorry, you have a question? Yeah. Uh, who is this? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Who is this 2600 magazine that one of the lar largest groups is trying to divorce themselves from it? Like, who's putting out the magazine if... Well, okay, um, the magazine and the meetings are two separate beasts. Um, the magazine begat the meetings, basically. Um, they started in New York City. Uh, about what, 86, 7? So. Possibly a little sooner, I'm not sure. But, you know, the idea of the meetings then spread. Um, I guess what it comes down to is a case of the views of the management do not necessarily represent those of its employees. <laughs> the other thing you have to remember, too, is 2600 isn't a group. 2600 is a magazine. And even though, you know, we're having our meetings under the 2600 name, we're no more a part of them than we are the Shriners. So, I should give you some idea on that. Um, doing things like, uh, like you said, like sharing the culture with people, things like that. Um, I'd like to see people take what, what others have out there. Uh, update your websites if you're planning to have a meeting. That's critical. If people don't see that your yeah. website's being updated on yeah. a regular basis, they won't come because if it says last updated, what was that, 1996? Yeah, um, a while, while back I was going through, I was actually hitting up uh, every single meeting homepage that 2600 had listed on their site. I just wanted to see what other people were up to. You know, I was just curious, like, okay, you know, how does, how does the meeting in Topeka get along? You know, and poking around. And yeah, we found one that was still listed uh, as active, and they hadn't updated the website in, you know, six years. Which is a little frightening because, well, if you've got anybody who wants to turn up to it, they're going to look at it and go, hey, yeah, right, okay. Yeah, it's probably dead, or the people who ran it aren't even there anymore. Yeah. Um, 
<coughs> I'd like to see that happen, like see people starting to do things where you can go and uh, find out what they did and what they talked on and have it there and be able to, if, if I don't feel like writing something every month, it would be nice to be able to go to you know the New York City or the LA 2600 and pull one of their talks off of their website and say, the guys from LA did this, this is what we're going to talk about. Maybe somebody who's sitting there listening to that um, will get something else. Then they'll go to the website, grab it, uh, make some changes, submit it back to the uh, author of the original talk, and it just gets better and better from there. Um, yeah. Things just improve, uh, the ideas become better, and um, and people get smarter is basically what it comes down to. Uh, as a as a group, as a whole, uh, we're a lot more intelligent than we are standing alone. Yeah, I mean this is this is also something that's very important. You need to get in touch with the other groups, not just in your area, but on a wider basis. You know, if for some reason, <coughs> actually, can I have that, please? Um, <laughs> I want this. I'm real thirsty. There. Thanks. One second. <laughs> we're both. Yeah. Okay, I can speak again. Um, yeah, this is one thing that's important is to go to other meetings uh, that are being held that you know about. Reason being, you know, it's a good idea to see what other people are up to, but it also it also helps to reestablish the community by doing that. Um, I've been to a lot of 2600 meetings in different cities, uh, both in, in inside and outside. The <coughs> All right, I'm going to die here. Both inside and outside the U.S. and Really, establishing that contact and keeping it firm is pretty essential. Um, without it, you know, there won't be an underground. You you have to have people in contact with each other who can exchange ideas. I have that. <laughs> All right. Um, I totally agree with what he's saying. Getting out there, it would, like I don't have the time. Sorry, you know. But we have had people come visit our meetings and come from other places around the country, and they're like, "Wow, you know, you guys really have your act together. You're doing something here. You know, that's great. Oh, I wish my 2600 meeting was like this." And you know, my simple question is, why isn't it? It doesn't take much because you know, uh, yeah, you need for the sake of making myself sound like an idiot. If I can do it, anybody can. So I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, essentially, a stable meeting location, a website that gets updated regularly, and a mailing list. Those, those are the three three main things you're going to need to actually set it up and keep everybody together and things going. Or an IRC channel. Yeah. Or two. Four. Four. Yeah. <laughs> but um, does anybody uh, have any experiences they want to share as far as their meetings, how their meetings are structured and whatnot? <clears throat> uh, from Oklahoma City, what we tried recently is uh, kind of dividing, like you said, is a good idea. When I first started showing up, it's a smaller coffee shop where the guy was real cool and gave us like this tea and we had to pull up for Jack Don. Um, and then we said, you know, we all talk to the whatever. And, uh, a half an hour pre your conversation, half an hour after your computer conversation, half an hour political conversation. Um, about the Patriot Act, other political repercussions yep. things. And uh, that's pretty cool because the guys, like you're saying, the white guys, the pre your guys, can start pulling out all this equipment. Uh, it's really cross their race drive. See, that's great. I mean, perfect example. You just go and you, yeah. uh, if you're just hanging out in a food court, that's what you're doing. You're not having a 2600 meeting. You're hanging out in the food court. You know, that's like, what's the difference there? Yeah, I mean, if you're actually equally lame. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's that's the other thing too. You need to, you need to pick your location. You need to do two things with your location. You need to pick it well. You got to have somewhere stable because I know you, I know you guys are meeting in a food court. Yeah. Um, pretty much, we can't do that. There's no mall in downtown LA, and you know, trying to find a meeting place in Los Angeles is great because, well, just the acreage of the place, it's massive. So we pick somewhere mutually inconvenient to everybody, which is downtown. But pretty much, you know, you meet, you meet in a coffee shop, you can make yourselves noticeable because you're in a smaller setting, you stand out a little bit more. The other thing, too, is you've got to keep good relations with where you're meeting. If, if you burn your hosts, you know, ultimately, you don't own the meeting location. They're, they're just going to kick you out and tell you never to come back, and that's their prerogative. You've got people stealing things, breaking things, running around molesting the other customers, um, you know, swinging dead cats over their heads and chanting yabba yabba yabba. Um, they're not surprised how often that happens. Yeah. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> well, we won't get into that. Um, no, seriously, um, you know, if they don't like you, they're just going to kick you out, and well, the meeting's screwed then. Yeah. Um, definitely be on good terms. 
we didn't ask to, to use the food court. We just kind of happened upon it. And like I said, when it was there, there were like seven people. They didn't care. And now that there's like 40, they started to notice. And they like the security guards would come by, and they're like, oh, you're having your computer meetings again? And they haven't... Yeah, I saw you guys here last week. We're like, all right. <laughs> um, they still haven't figured out it's the first Friday of every month. Yeah. Um, so... <laughs> Maybe we're just still there because they don't know when to catch us. Actually, there's a question there. Does it have to be on that Friday? Can it be another day of the week? Uh, there, because it's, it's really hard when the place that you may be using or the people that were most interested in that are into miniature gaming and to other miniature role playing sure. and stuff like that. You got a lot of competition for sure. Friday. Let me give you an example on that. Um, we're, we're using the first Friday analogy simply because that's when 2,600 meetings are supposed to happen. No, but I heard that, that we are supposed to. Okay, it doesn't have to be that. No. You... no, I mean, you can do it anytime. I mean, to give you some example, we've got a uh, BBS meet that a bunch of us go to every Tuesday night. And, you know, we turn up in the pizza place, we eat pizza, um, try not to leave too much of a mess. But it's actually interesting you mentioned the role playing people because, yeah, back in the other corner away from us, we've got another group that. They're role-playing people. They meet there the same night we do. So it's entirely a possibility. I mean, you know, you, you can't say, like, what day you're going to have your meeting on. You just do it when it's most convenient for everybody involved. And, again, um, we're talking about 2,600 meetings because we both run them, but it doesn't have to be a 2,600 yeah. meeting. You can say, you know, it's the whatever meeting and have it on any day you want. It's not a necessity. Um, although I do recommend uh, consistently using either... Uh, the same day of the month or like, you know, 2600 is the first Friday, yeah. uh, doing something like that so that people, you know, know to show up that time. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Or it's like, you know, people, people call the payphones at the LA meet occasionally. And it's like, you know, last month this guy calls up and he's like, you know, is that the 2600 meeting? And I'm like, no, sorry, it's 2602. Let me, let me go next door and get them. I set the phone down, stand there for a couple minutes, you know, like, 2600. It's like, oh, wow, you guys are really here, you know. It's, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know, people, people keep calling us and people, people, keep, people keep calling the guys next door. I don't know, I guess they got the number wrong in the magazine or something, but, you know, the correct number is, and then I gave them the number of the payphone next to me. Well, he's like, oh, okay, sorry about that. So, you know, hang up. Five minutes later, sure enough, you know, the other payphone rings. He's like, oh, and I forgot to ask you. <laughs> Like, oh, you got the right number now, so. <laughs> so, uh, anybody, go ahead. Yeah, how does the meeting once a month work out? Do you guys want to meet more often? You send you the BBS. Um, one thing we do is we meet the first Friday and every third Saturday at a different location, hopefully a little closer. We try to do that. Um, we, we don't particularly have, like, a structured meeting. Like, we have the 2600 meeting. And then, uh, like, we're pretty much separated by about a half an hour each way. But, uh... We all get together at one guy's house, Deadhead, who's sitting in the front row down over here, and he's got a lot of land right on the like right near Salt Lake. So uh, we have trash fires, is what we call yeah. them. We go out there and we have basically bonfires, and we talk about things like why hasn't uh, virtual reality taken off and stuff, and we just dork out till three in the morning and then go home. So yeah. I mean, and you know, we do we do the same usual sort of get together stuff. Other people do like some do be like, hey, I'm having a barbecue this weekend. You know, y'all swing on by. And, you know, stuff like that that's pretty informal. Depends on what time you get there. Um, the official LA meeting is at uh, Union Station, the train station in the middle of downtown. We're only there for two hours. We then move over to Philippe's Deli down the street and then over to the Denny's by the jail. Exactly. Well, here's like here's my view on this. And now, if this is any of you out here, then I apologize for bashing on you, but I'm about to. Um, you come to DEF CON and you sit in the hallway with yeah. your laptop. You can be on the internet 362 other days out of the year. Shut the damn laptop and go talk to somebody in yeah. real life. Yeah.
Yeah, I, I just want to say that since since I drove out here from LA Thursday morning, my laptop has been powered for a grand total of 20 minutes because I had to grab a piece of software that completely failed at programming the radios I was trying to program. Yeah, and I turned mine on to dump the images off the memory yeah. stick onto the laptop while I'm running around yeah, but, taking pictures. Yeah, um, the that, same thing. I was going to say just that's that's the whole point of the meetings. It's it's social interaction. It's to get people together face to face so they can actually talk. I'll guarantee there's somebody sitting in a hallway out here that's talking to someone else in a hallway over yep. there. It's like, where are you? I'm at DEF CON. Where? Oh, where? I'm in the DJ room. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. I'm out in the hallway by the vendor area. Sweet. Yeah, Emoticon, Emoticon. You know? <laughs> but yes, yeah, so it's like it's like you know when you're living with your roommates and you realize you're both on the same IRC channel at the same time and there's about four feet of air separating you between the cinder block wall. You know, this, this is the same syndrome we're, we're seeing here. So yeah, meeting, meeting somewhere without internet access, I would actually say is a good thing. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Well, if, if there's a beyond the internet, then maybe there's a larger problem. I mean, it's back on the where it's like, or... How do you mean? I'm, I'm not kidding. Well, it's like, if, if you're going to come to a meeting and just sit on the internet, let it. Well, yeah, I mean, if that's what they feel like doing, then that's fine. Sure. If they want to sit over in the corner and, and talk on uh, AOL Instant Messenger to their mom somewhere or whatever, yeah. then that's great, you know? Everybody needs a hobby. So, um, like, we're not... As long as they're not sitting there having that, uh, like, annoying aim sound going off every two seconds while someone's giving a talk, then more power to you sit in yeah. the corner if you want to. It's kind of like the drop, like, then they won't learn yeah. anything. I mean, that's great. If they like to come to the food court once a month and sit on the internet, then, then you know, everybody, it's a free country. Yeah, I mean, and for now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's only, it's only natural people are going to turn up and bring their laptop or whatever because, you know, it's like a couple months ago, uh, I couldn't figure out why the hell Windowmaker would not build on my laptop. I... To this day, somehow it did it. It works. It shouldn't, but that's another story. But yeah, people will turn up and you know they'll bring they bring their machines and say like, hey, take a look at this, or hey, do you know anything about this? And that's fine. You know, I've got no problem with that. It's just internet access. Put it this way: the internet has become the current equivalent to video rental in the 1980s. It's it's something to switch off to. It's it's passive entertainment, and. Really, if you're going to the meeting to do that, why not just save yourself the time and travel and stay at home and sit on AOL Instant Messenger there? Everybody you're talking to on IRC is probably going to be at the meeting anyway. Yeah. So you might as well go and just talk to them. Um, any more questions or any experiences? Anyone? There's a million of them right there. Uh, another one of the sessions, one of the guys in the group uh, had a little plug-in plug to try to get security needs being started too. So you probably want to just go check it out. See, there you go. There, another meeting. There are alternatives to a 2600 meeting. The reason uh, we do 2600 is because it's there. It's established. People know what a 2600 meeting is, and you know, and hopefully. Day, then you know security geeks will all gather around under different you know names but uh, okay. how do you okay did ever be here the question and the threat of more beatings to come is very effective you know <laughs> honestly yeah it kind of works um but uh I find that the way to deal with people who are just being completely uh, rude and obnoxious is public humiliation. Yeah. They're sitting around with about 30 of their peers and it, hey, while it may not be the right thing to do, it works for me so I'm going to use it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's like we had, we had one guy who used to... Humiliation works. The chances are they're just not smart enough that they're actually sitting down and five minutes to tell them about what you know. Mm. Oh, no, good, good Here's that, that's a great point. What, uh, go ahead. Oh, okay, yeah. Going. Yeah, pretty much to give, you, to give you an example of that. Um, we had one guy who used to turn up at our meetings semi-regularly. And I swear to God, this guy, he looked like he was Johnny Lee Miller's stand-in in Hackers, okay? <laughs> now, he also had a little bit of the I am Mr. Uberleet Super Ninja Hacksaw dude about him, okay? And he and I are talking, and you know, it's one of these things where it's like I'm, I'm the first person to turn up at the meet because I can juggle my work schedule, so that I'm always there on a Friday. Pretty much, uh, 
you know, we're sitting there talking, and in amongst telling me how lead he is, he's like, oh, I got a problem with my laptop I can't figure out. Like, okay, well, whatever, show me. Turns the thing on, and Windows 98 can't find the Windows, uh, Windows driver model driver for his sound card. <laughs> now, this guy hands me a thing, and I'm like, dude, yeah, um, your host. And sit there and promptly fix it for him and hand it back to him. And, you know, that was, that was a good object lesson in teaching him if you can't fix your goddamn sound card problem, don't tell me how, how, how much you know, because you don't. And he, you know, after that he calmed down. I mean, he, yeah. he was a pretty decent guy. That's like, if somebody, you can be a total tool as much as you want to be, um, but people won't respect you. Uh, if somebody was being a complete idiot for the first two to three months they came to the meeting and then realized that they were being an idiot and came up and said, hey, look, you know, I was being stupid and I just want to be here to learn, then it's like, you know what, that's cool. Yeah. So, I mean, we're not saying that because you were stupid once, you're an outcast for life, although... Uh, as far as the group goes, the damage has probably already been done. So it's like, uh, just keep your mouth shut and listen for a little while. <laughs> yeah. I think you got one there. Like whatever you're into, somebody out there will be interested in the same thing. And to like touch on what you said about like you know saying, oh, the meeting's not here. That's like how many people heard uh, DefCon is canceled, it's postponed. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is this yeah. is this is oh what I love. Gosh. I I heard DefCon was canceled from some people on IRC. Is this true? <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't go to DefCon. It's not happening. It, it's over. If if it, if it was on FNet, yeah, it was true. Yeah. Never, IRC is real life. Actually, uh, speaking, actually, sorry, just one second, we'll get you. Um, we have some giveaways here from the people at Unix Surplus. Um, I personally would call it a doorstop, but it's actually a Spark IPX and some kind of, a, and some kind of, uh, some kind of external SCSI enclosure here. So, uh, good questions get prizes. There you go. So, go ahead. Actually, interesting you mentioned that. Um, yeah, every once in a while. And by and large, um, they're not really interested in us. They don't care. Um, yeah, funnily enough. Um, the, actually, the, the LA uh, field office, the FBI, um, just to touch on this a little bit, is pretty well aware that we're just a bunch of geeks getting together. We're not the problem. You know, we could potentially be the problem. But, it, you know, it was like, okay, something happened. Oh, that was other kids. So, yeah, we, we um, do... Yeah, we... Uh, yes and no. There's, there, this is, sorry, cool. this, this is one other thing. Um, there's a lot of people out there right now who do not have the maturity or self-control to understand the ramifications of what they do. Um, to give you an example, there were some people making phone calls to Afghanistan on stolen uh, government emergency telephone system cards a while back. They very wisely chose to do this on September 13th, 2001. Now, these people assumed that, oh yeah, they'll never find us. Well, well, actually, they, they, they weren't actually part of our meetings. They were just other kids. They were just other kids sort of in the area. And um, it was made very plain to them that their actions were unacceptable. And what it came down to was they didn't have the foresight to be able to understand how what they're doing would affect other people. And, you know, they're now known as persona non grata. Well, um, as far as the 2600 Salt Lake City goes with, uh, with law enforcement, 
Uh, we haven't really had any problems. We get the mall security, like I said, who comes by, and like, I, there's a picture. One time, I had them handcuff me, and they were really like nervous that they were going to break my wrist or something. And um, uh, so they're pretty cool with it on that. Uh, in that respect, we've had like when uh, back last August we did the um, the protest for Dimitri. And we had uh, Salt Lake Police, the Highway Patrol, and the state troopers. Like it was like we got nothing to do. Let's all go see what these dorks are doing on the corner. <laughs> and, like, so, uh, and once you once you explain that you're you know, people pretty much think don't say <laughs> don't say hacker. Say we're just a bunch of geeks because geeks are harmless. Yep. Um, even uh, the road trip, we were getting ready to leave. We're all in the parking lot uh, of a, like a diner. And um, and the cops show up. There were some people that were out there before we walked out that were like kicking cars as they went by because they were completely drunk. Um, but so they leave, and then we go out, and the cop thinks that that's us, you know. And we're like, no, 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 we're we're just total dorks on our way to Vegas. And so you know, the cops like, really, you know, we're like, yeah, we're we're going to a computer convention. And he's like, all right, well, you guys have a good night. Good job. <laughs> So, you know, a bunch of geeks in a parking lot at 2 in the morning, uh, strapping wireless antennas to a van. I see that blue. <laughs> Guy in the blue cap. Uh, how are you doing with situations like the cell phone stealer in the group? Because one hand, you want to I don't have any patience for that. If somebody's doing something illegal or if they're breaking something, I get real ugly real quick. So it's usually taken care of immediately. Yeah, I mean, usually, usually a real quiet, just taking them off to the side and saying, "Listen, man, you know, you're not wanted here." Yeah, you don't Precisely. necessarily like just flat out. You make it well known that yeah. they're unwelcome. I mean, let everybody else know so that if they see yeah. the guy around again, they don't, you know, they don't drag him back. They don't bring him around. All right. Or you have him get the get his docs or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I mean, this is the other thing. You know, the place where we meet. We're right next to a main fire station. We're in downtown. We get cops in and out of there just having lunch. You know, it's the middle of their shift. They're hungry. They're going to grab a sandwich. And these guys, they know we're they know we're there. We know they're there. Who cares? You know, the, nobody. They don't. They don't even notice us. We're just other people in the restaurant. Yes. Okay. That happen. Mm. Yeah, I mean that's that's the whole thing about policing yourself. Um, you know, if you if you've got people who are causing problems, y you've got to get them out of there because it's it's going to come down on everybody else ultimately. Yeah, there's it does you no know, good to have have the meeting shut down because one person uh, is an idiot. Well, yeah, basically, um, he made a good point. He said, if you don't police yourself, the cops will. So um, you just, like I said, though, when it gets to the point to where you have like a technical agenda and you say like, you know, or some kind of structure to a meeting where people discuss things, the generally the people who are uh, going to cause problems or are, you know, just there to be stupid, won't go because they have if there's only one of them they have no one else to feed off of you know idiots are great when there's two of them you know feeding each other on but when there's one of them and a bunch of intelligent people they get really uncomfortable really fast and they'll usually head on out the door or just not show up the next month so it becomes a self-policing meeting and we need to start giving stuff away yeah let's give stuff away uh, <laughs> actually i think i saw a question oh um oh, all right you, you can you can come up here and battle it out for the question. We'll give you a spark. <laughs> you get somebody as good looking as us. <laughs> um, 
I don't know. Yeah. That's a good, you know, if you figure it out, you let us know. <laughs> that is a good question. Okay, what do you want, a spark or an enclosure? <laughs> No, seriously, <laughs> you, you are taking one of these, okay? <laughs> so. You've got to have it. You're not, you're not sticking us with it. Can I have a question? Sure. Sure. Can I have a I've got to give him credit for being ballsy. Yeah, that, that's, that is. How about, how about an enclosure? Uh, I just got to one. Yeah, nobody else wants it. No. Hang on. No. <laughs> okay. Cool. It's, you don't get it, dude. Sorry. <laughs> That was very democratic of us, all right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Call me and yeah, I really did come up tails in case anybody. We have a bunch of them at the uh, scavenger hunt table. Go over there and uh, register a team and win the scavenger hunt, and you'll get a couple of them. So. <laughs> there you go. Um. Anybody else? Uh. Yeah. I, sure. I'll yeah. Go. Go ahead. Uh, what can you um, if people are interested, they'll stay. I mean, you, it's it's not it's not like growing plants. You know, you don't you don't water and feed them. Um, if if people like like what's going on, they'll come back. And um, as far as getting new members, you know, do the flyer thing. You know, update the website, get yourself listed in the back of 2600, um, and even like a message board or something like that would be good. And then. Uh, when you get to a point to where you have like 30 some odd, 40 some odd members, people just start showing up. Word of mouth will get it around. So. Um, we don't really work on group projects as like a 2600 group. Like there are individual groups within our 2600 meeting, like the Hectic Crew and uh, ZZQ. <laughs> our groups rhyme. Um, but our accomplishments are getting this out there, getting like all the talks. Like that's what we have: uh, DVD ripping the right way, intro to ham radios, uh, basics of uh, footprinting, pirate radio, um, trace route explained, uh, VNC, the art of laziness, actually um, stuff like that. We just get the information out there, and that's what we're trying to accomplish with it. This is actually touching on something else that's a pretty good point. Um, you can come up with projects out the wazoo all you want. I mean, you can sit there and come up with project after project after project, and you can't make people do them. If people are interested, they'll latch onto them, but you can't say, like, you know, this month we're going to, and expect everybody to sit there and, you know, turn into a little worker hive and build or do or whatever. You can't get a bunch of people who don't like programming to sit around yeah. and program. So, um, yeah. yeah. In Maine, ooh, beer. Any, anyone? So one thing I thought was a good point was, uh, when I first started going to meetings, a lot of my aliases that seemed really important then, and it really helped the structure of the field to get everybody's first name, but really out in the open. Because mm. uh, that didn't discourage people that were there doing the same thing either. I don't like my first name, so I'm Grifter. <laughs> I, I don't like his first name either. It's pretty bad. <laughs> so he's screwed. Um. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was actually going to ask the same question. How did, did any uh, conflict between people's handles and photos online? Did anybody mention anything like you don't want to photo online? I'm, I really I couldn't hear what you said. Uh, putting people's handles and their picture online. Uh -huh. Any conflict? No, we always ask. Like, you know, if you don't want to be on there, you get a blurred face. If you don't want to be on there, then, you know, you're, you don't have to be. It's not like, yeah. like I said, that, that part of the site we don't even use anymore. So. Yeah, I mean, we don't, we don't even have much in the way of pictures of people up there. I mean, we've got like our 10th anniversary pictures, you know, and it's, it's pretty much a case of it's a meeting. You're supposed to be turning up. You know, if you don't know anybody there, it's not going to do you any good to have the faces beforehand. But, you know, like you said, for the sake of knowing the guy you were talking to last month, it makes sense. Yeah, and um, for the most part, all the pictures that we take each month, like I put a little description of what it is, if I can think of something witty, so, which it usually isn't. But any other questions? I don't know, but I think we should give yeah. that guy something because he's got the number 23 on his shirt. What's the location and time? Um, same as, you know, regular. It's Friday, uh, first Friday of the month, 5 to 8. And then uh, afterwards, uh, if you're smart and invited, there's a after meeting at a bar, so you actually have to have been on a BBS at some point in your life to go to that. And um, it's at the uh, 
food court just in the ZCMI mall in Salt Lake. So it's in the back of the magazine. Uh, let's give this stuff away and get out yeah. of here. Uh, okay, so who, who looks most deserving of an item? Let's make them do something stupid. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Battle of the Geeks for a no. spark. No, that's that's just sad and boring. I've seen that happen before. We should just give that guy the spark. Let's give him the spark. Let's just give him. You, should, you can come get the spark, man. Yeah, we come get the spark. You you are worthy of the spark. No, come on up. Come on up. All right. Camera side. Okay. All right. Oh, you're just being difficult. Let's give it to somebody else. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Ooh, caddy loader, no caddy. <laughs> so this fine SCSI enclosure. Um, okay, who will do something stupid and or demeaning for it? <laughs> um, holding up a laptop is neither stupid nor demeaning, sir. <laughs> but it's red. Y yeah, you know. Okay, the red hat guy gets the enclosure. <laughs> All right. We're done. Thanks for coming out. Thanks, folks.